Hello and welcome to Unit 5 Embedded Assessment 1. Uh, this obviously is over area, uh, composite area of some basic geometric shapes uh, as well as regular polygons and uh, sectors of circles as well. So let's go ahead and, and get started on this one. Hopefully you've attempted this. We can just check your work and go over any questions you have. Uh, here, the students are creating a backdrop for a play. Uh, they need to figure out uh, the area of all these shapes so they can figure out how much it's going to cost if the paint costs uh, $12.50 per gallon. Um, and each can of paint covers this many square feet. We need to figure out how many total square feet are there uh, to see how much it's going to cost to paint this. So a lot of these shapes here are some basic shapes. Uh, so like these rectangles should be real easy. This is 20 by uh, 3. Uh, we get 60 square feet for this first figure. Uh, for the next one, uh, we could figure out uh, the height of it is 25, we can tell from here. But this one, we'd have to subtract this piece is 3, this piece is 11. So 38 minus all of these gives us that there's 3 feet left here. So 3 times 25 is 75. All right, this one we have the base is 11, the height is 15, so we get uh, 165. And these last two, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work here. Uh, so these both are composite shapes. Uh, this first figure four right here is a rectangle with a semicircle on top, uh, but we don't necessarily know how tall the rectangle is or the radius of that semicircle. So first thing is I can use this 15 as the diameter here. And that means that I know that uh, the radius is 7.5, which means if I draw any radius on there, it is going to be 7.5. And I can use that from the top as well and subtract that from 25 to figure out this side over here has to be 17.5. Oh, I guess it goes all the way up to there. All right, so then uh, I can find the rectangle pretty easily. Uh, all I have to do is multiply uh, 15 by 17.5 and I get 262.5. And then for the semicircle, I'm just gonna find the area of one half of a circle uh, with a radius of 7.5. So area equals one half of the area of a circle. and plug that in your calculator, you get about 88.36 for this one. So 88.36. Uh, all right, so, so far we've got most of these down already. For this last one, uh, we have another composite shape, a rectangle with a triangle on top. Uh, first, the light shaded area is a triangle the dark shaded area is a rectangle the rectangle is easy six times 15 we get 90 but then we do have to add on this little triangle above it so it looks like an isosceles triangle that has a base of six and the two congruent legs are five let's see if we can figure that out if i draw the height because i know area is going to equal one half base times height um, I see that that is going to, if this is an isosceles triangle, it will cut this side into two equal pieces. So that means each congruent piece here would be three and three. And, oh, this one's easy. You could either do Pythagorean theorem or recognize it as a three, four, five right triangle. So this piece here has to be four. So then your overall base of the triangle, the whole base, all the way across would be six. The height is four. So then one half, six times four. We do get uh, half of six is three times four, we get 12. So that little piece there would be 12. So now we can add up the area of all these to figure out the total area of this skyline. So in your calculator, add all these up.
752.86 total. And for area, we will use square units. Now that we know this, let's go back and make sure we can answer the question on here. Uh, determine the budget, the, the cost of materials, uh, if they 1250 per gallon, one gallon covers 350 square feet. Uh, the wooden backdrop, blah, blah, blah. They, oh, they're going to be doing two coats of paint. Okay, so then two coats of paint, we can double this and we get 1505.7. Uh, and now that we know how many total square feet we're going to be painting, if we do two coats, uh, we can figure out how many gallons it's going to take here by 350 per gallon. So uh, take this and divide by 350. And we'll figure out that it's going to take approximately 4.3 gallons. And since gallons only come, uh, or paint only comes in whole gallons, uh, five gallons of paint oops, times 1250 will end up uh, being 6250 uh, total. Because uh, you can't buy 4.3 gallons. You do need to buy five whole gallons of paint to make sure you have enough to get the two goats on there. All right, for the next uh, section of this one, it says that they are going to be um, using a beehive. The backdrop is shaped like a regular hexagon as shown on the coordinate plane. Each unit on the coordinate plane represents five feet. So one unit here will be five feet. Determine the budget for painting one side of the backdrop with a yellow coat of paint. And then the perimeter is going to be covered with the uh, reflecting tape. So we're going to put one coat of paint on this. And we also need to figure out the perimeter. Uh, let's do the perimeter first because that part should be easy. Uh, I can see here that um, it takes four of these tick marks here to get to one unit. So one, two, three, four. So every four tick marks is one unit or five feet. Okay, so I can see right here that this side is one, two, three, four units long, exactly. Uh, well, one unit, four tick marks on there. So each side of this, since this is a regular hexagon, I know all of these are going to be five. So five times six is 30. And how much did the tape cost if I wanted to put tape around the perimeter? 450 per roll, one. Roll covers 40 linear feet. That should be more than enough. If it's 30 feet around, they only need one roll, so it's only going to cost uh, 450, right? Okay, yeah, so one roll. Let's say that you thought each one of these represented uh, five feet, so there's 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, that just means that we could multiply everything by 4. So then this would be uh, 5 times 4 is 20. 6 times 20 would be 120, so we get the perimeter equals, uh, 20 equals 120. 40 linear feet, you need three rolls of tape. So if you interpreted this with different units, um, you would have needed three whole rolls of tape because you would have gotten the perimeter was 120. All right, let's go ahead and do the area of this one now. So area equals, for a regular polygon, one half. A, P. The perimeter, if we did this perimeter here, would have been uh, 30 feet. So I can plug that in. And to find the apothem, uh, we do need to create isosceles triangles here so that we can use either trigonometry or special right triangles to figure out uh, the apothem right here. Uh, so if the entire side was five units, half of it would be 2.5. On a hexagon, you could make uh, six triangles here. So then 360 degrees divided by six means each one of these is uh, 60 degrees and half of it would be 30 degrees. So I could use a right triangle to help me solve for the apothem where I have one of the sides is 2.5 uh, feet. This angle here is 30 degrees, and I need to solve for the apothem. So a tangent of an angle equals opposite over adjacent. Tangent of 30 degrees equals 
2.5 over adjacent. So for A, we get A equals 2.5 over tangent of 30. Okay, so plug that in our calculator, 2.5 over tangent of 30. Uh, and we should get uh, about 4.33 as our answer for that one. So the apothem is approximately, uh, oops, approximately equal to 4.33. So now we can type that into our formula here. One half, 4.33 times our perimeter was 30. And uh, type that in our calculator, one half, 4.33 and 30. And we should get 64.95 for our answer on that one, approximately 64.95. And feet squared. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and calculate as well what we would get for this one if we did uh, the units. So then the perimeter would have been 120. And uh, let me go ahead and type in those calculations as well. Let me do that one in a different color. All right, so area equals one half AP, and the perimeter was 120. To solve for this, we would have gotten, uh, if the whole side was 20, then half of it would have been 10. So the calculations would have been pretty much the same. Tangent of 30 equals 10 over A, or A equals 10 over tangent of 30. Let's check that one out. We get 17.32. And type that in the calculator. Seventeen point three two and one twenty. Ten thirty nine for this one. Point two. Okay, so now that we know the areas of both of these, uh, let's see if we can not figure out how much the paint for these will cost as well. It uh, covers 350 square feet. This would just be not even one full can of paint, so one can of paint. And this one we divide by 350, and we should get uh, 700 plus 350. Oh, so three cans of paint. So, uh, yeah, one can would be 350. Two cans would be 700. Three cans would be 1050 for that one. So three cans should be enough, depending on which units you thought. All right. Uh, there is one more question, so let's check this one out. Uh, it says here that uh, part of the school stage is uh, shaped like a sector of a circle, as shown below. The students do not yet know the exact dimensions of this part of the stage, but they want to identify as many relationships as possible so that they will be able to decorate this part of the stage when the dimensions are available. Explain why S over A equals T over A plus B. So this is uh, these are similar figures, so you can use proportions to solve these. So the arc over the radius of a circle would equal uh, the, ra the ratio of the arc over the radius of a similar circle. So it's kind of like if they were triangles, you know, let's pretend for a second this was S and this was T. If you compare these two sides, uh, S and A, it should be the same as T and BA. Uh, same ratios, they are proportional to each other. So it says the length of S is 12 feet, and the length of A is 10. Determine the measure of angle 1 in this. So this one, uh, it tells us the uh, arc, which is part of the circumference. And I want to be able to figure out this angle measure uh, at 1. OK, so I know there's a relationship between the radius and circumference. Uh, I know that the circumference uh, is 2 pi 
r. But I don't want to use the entire circumference. I just want to use a fraction of the circumference. And I can get that fraction of the circumference from the central angle, or in this case, uh, angle 1. So I want to use whatever fraction out of the 360 degrees, the measure of angle 1 out of 360. That's the exact same ratio of the total circumference that I want, 2 pi r. So I'll figure out what this fraction out of the 360 is in terms of the degrees, and that's going to be the same fraction that I want out of the total circumference. So this is going to equal the arc length. So the arc length is going to be a fraction of the total circumference. So let's plug in what I know. The arc length is 12. The measure of angle 1 is what I'm trying to find. And the radius out to that point is 10. I should be able to very easily solve for this one. Uh, divide both sides by 2 pi 10. and then multiply both sides by 360. All right, so let's type that in our calculator and see what we get. So 360 times 12 over 2 pi 10. Looks like we get uh, 68.75 degrees for that angle. So 68.75 degrees. And that does seem like a reasonable answer for this one, uh, even though it's not probably not quite drawn to scale. Uh, it does make sense for us here. Uh, you know, if you did have a piece that was 10 and an arc measure that was 12, it should be about a 68, 70 degree angle there. All right. Uh, I guess we're done here, so see you guys on the next one.